For five weeks, we've been in a series called All Up In My Feels, a.k.a. also known as Our Emotions. And it's been life-changing and convicting. We've talked about anger, sadness, anxiety, pride, and fear. This week, I was supposed uh, to be closing out this series with a message entitled Gage or Guide. I, I was super pumped up. I was excited, but God. We make plans, but God directs our steps. And when God directs, it's best not to disobey. So sit up, buckle up, and listen up as we dive into the joy of heaven. Let's pray. God, we love you. And God, your word declares that those who are in Christ, God, we fight from victory, not for victory. God, we also understand that your word tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers of darkness. And so, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over this piece of geography. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would have freedom, God, to move in a supernatural way. And I pray that when we leave this place, when we walk out of this room or get off on, online, that our lives would never, ever be the same again. God, I pray this, and all God's people said, amen. For many, many people, the speculation of a personal afterlife is anti-intellectual that ran its course with tent revivals and sawdust floors of sweaty, screaming evangelists. Is it possible heaven has become an afterthought in our churches because the Christian life has become about building our kingdom instead of God's kingdom? The philosophy of living your best life now is a scam if you are the spotlight. The Christian life is about bringing honor and glory to God who rescued us from ourselves. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I. Someone say I. I. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And I get it. Our culture is all about self-help. Believe in yourself and follow your heart. But here's the skinny. Here's the 411. Self-help doesn't solve spiritual problems because selfie is the problem. And if selfie is the problem, then selfie cannot be the answer. And if selfie is not the answer, you must need someone else outside of selfie to solve the problem. Are we tracking? Jesus is the answer to this life and the next. Colossians 3 says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of where? Heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. As I walk through this message, I want every person in this room, every person under the sound of my voice, those of you online, to wrestle with this question. Do I, it's personal, do I know where I will spend eternity one second after I die? In 1 Samuel, David is running from Saul who is trying to kill him. And he says something to Jonathan that's incredibly profound and true for all of us. He said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. All of us, every single one of us are just one step between life and death. But the truth is, dead people don't die. The flat line is not the finish line. Death is not the end. You do not annihilate. You do not cease to exist. I promise reincarnation is not real. You are not coming back as a polka dot pony or Dr. Pimple Popper. 
That's an in, insane show, isn't it? Like crazy. I have some inside info. There is no such thing as come as you were party. I've never seen a tombstone that said BRB. Be right back. <laughs> and sadly, most tombstones say rest in peace, RIP. But most people are not resting in peace. You and I get one shot at this thing called life and that's it. When you take your last breath on hotel earth, where will you spend eternity? Lean in and listen. Mulligans, do-overs, and take it from the top don't exist after you die. You will spend eternity in a place called heaven or a place called hell. And I know a lot of pastors and churches don't talk about hell anymore, but it represents a truth that cannot be avoided because good people don't go to heaven. Did you hear what I said? Good people don't go to heaven. Bubba across the street, it's not your standard. The girl at work who's living like hell, it's not your standard. If there's no hell, then Jesus' death on the cross was in vain. A recent poll revealed 74%, check this out, 74% of Americans believe in heaven, but only 40% of professing Christians believe hell is a literal place for people. Some people, some Christians believe earth is our hell. Others believe hell is going to be a fun place where the party never ends. Neither of those beliefs are biblical. Don't buy the lie. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 7, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. Why is it narrow? Because there's only one way. He said the highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for many who do what? Choose. You have free will. For the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult. Can I get an amen? amen? Jesus never promised easy. He said in this world you will have trouble. Right? But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Jesus makes it crystal clear. There's a lot of people on the wrong path. If I was the devil, and I'm not, <laughs> my strategy would be to convince people hell is not a real place. Perhaps if I could convince you that hell doesn't exist, you wouldn't have to live your life trying to justify your sinful lifestyle isn't biblically correct. And yes, there's been a, a, a cosmic shift in our culture when it comes to Christianity. From politics to the pulpit, there is a trend of redefining biblical truth, even in many of our churches. But here's what you need to understand. This is our GPS at the Journey Church. This is truth. Think about it. Many believers would reject sacrifice and idolize comfort if hell didn't exist. Life would be all about me, myself, and I. It's all about me. It's all about I. Right? My truth, my faith, my Jesus. All roads do not lead to God. Judgment awakes every person who rejects Jesus as the only way to God. But the joy of heaven awaits every person who places their faith in Jesus Christ. So let's talk about heaven for a few minutes. But here's my disclaimer. I don't have the words or the vocabulary to describe the beauty and the majesty of heaven. But this I do know. When I read this book, heaven is a place of plurality. Scripture explains in detail, in, in detail the production of heaven. The book of Genesis says, in the beginning, who? God created the, say it with me, heavens, plural, and the earth. 
And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, appointed time, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens, there it is again, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. The sun, the moon, the stars, and all of the galaxies are a part of God's handiwork. A a small glimpse into his production of heaven. In John 14, Jesus explains the promise of heaven. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says, do not let your hearts be what? Troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And then he said, in my father's house are many rooms. Heaven is a physical place. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. It's not imaginary. It's not a fairy tale. It's real and it's eternal. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. What a promise. And take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. But watch this. Remember, he's talking to his disciples, and Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. Got some confusion. So how can we know the way? That's the question of the ages. That's the question our world wrestles with all the time. How can we know the way? Can we really know the way? And Jesus summed up the question. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one, not one person comes to the Father except through me. Hashtag boom. Jesus just set himself apart from all other religions or ways to God. Yet, there's still this culturally believed lie that spread into many of our churches. You may have heard it. You may have said it. Or even believe it yourself. And here it is. It doesn't matter what you believe about God as long as you are sincere. Now that sounds good and feels amazing. That's all up in my feels. That makes me feel good. That God is so loving it doesn't matter what you believe. Because all roads lead to the same place. Culturally, it's not controversial to believe in God or a higher power. The contention begins the moment you say, Jesus, Jesus is the only way to God. And if that's you, we're glad you're here. Listen, I'm not trying to shove Jesus down your throat. I'm not asking you to consider our church to be your church. My challenge is if you don't believe this book is true, if you don't believe heaven and hell are real places, if you don't believe Jesus is the only way to God, I double dog dare you. And you know if you're double dog dared, you got to do it. I double dog dare you to explore the credible evidence yourself because it has stood the test of time. Go read the books of countless critics who tried to discredit Christianity. Josh McDowell is one of them. He's been here several times. Lee Strobel did a book called The Case for Christ. These are great reads if you are struggling to know. I double dog dare you. Try to disprove Christianity. You cannot. 1 Corinthians 15 says, verse 51 through 53, we will not all die, but all will be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye. When the last trumpet is blown. This is a picture of the return of Jesus. What the church calls the rapture. It says, for when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. As humans, we are Body, soul, and spirit. 
The moment we say yes to Jesus, the moment we cross the line of faith, the moment we repent of all of our sins, our soul is fully redeemed, fully secure. I said this last week, our spirit is being redeemed, and one day we will get a brand new redeemed body. It's called the perfection of heaven. Revelation 21 tells us God himself will be with who? Them. Who is them? Those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. What a promise. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be what? No more. Say that with me. No more. Tell your neighbor, no more. No more death. No more sorrow. No more crying or pain. All, not most, but all these things are gone for how long? Forever. Forever, church. One day, God is going to hold our face in his hands and gently wipe away every tear from our eyes, every tragedy and heartache from our memory. The day is coming when our bodies will never again experience aging. Can I get an amen? Never experience bulging. No more spanks, ladies. No more crying, disease, pain, suffering. No more canes or crutches. No more walkers or wheelchairs. No more hospitals because there's no more arthritis. No more blindness, cancer, chemo, dementia, dialysis, radiation, respirators, tumors or tremors. Every person will be physically, mentally, and spiritually whole. The deaf will hear, the blind will see, and the paralyzed will run like Forrest Gump. That's all I have to say about that. Some of you are like, huh? What? Go watch the movie. Heaven is a place of unexplainable beauty and perfect health. Again, I don't have the vocabulary to describe it, but I want to stir your imagination for a minute with some insider intel. Heaven is equivalent to 1,500 square miles and 20 stories high. The walls have 12 foundations and are made of jasper, topaz, sapphire, ruby, emerald, turquoise, and six other precious stones. Every gate in heaven is made of a single pearl. The streets are paved with gold, and JEA is out of business because heaven is lighted with the glory of God. The beauty of heaven will be breathtaking, but the joy of heaven is Jesus. Jesus is the prize. Revelation 4 declares the throne of heaven is occupied by God himself. And the angels are singing day and night, holy, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Revelation chapter 5 says, when he took the scroll, Jesus, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell before the lamb. The 24 elders represent the saints of God. Each one had a harp and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Wow. And they sang a new song with these words, you are worthy, you are worthy to take the scroll. And break its seal and open it. For you were slaughtered. You were crucified. And your blood, Jesus, has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Woo! I'm so thankful I get to pastor a church that looks like heaven. It's worth fighting for, Journey Church. It's worth fighting for. This future scene we just read is insane. 
God's throne is surrounded by this incredible uh, translucent sea of glass. And all of the angels are bowing down singing, holy, holy, holy. And God's people, those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, are on their knees singing, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worship is so much more than just singing about God. It's about falling on our face and crying out, you alone, God, are worthy of my adoration, worthy of my devotion, worthy of my praise, worthy of my love, worthy of my worship. It's so much more than just singing about God. In Scripture, we see the production of heaven, the promise of heaven, the perfection of heaven. And lastly, I want to close with the permanence of heaven. Revelation 21, 27 says, nothing impure will ever enter heaven. Nothing impure will ever enter heaven. I'm so glad. That when you step into a relationship with Jesus, he wipes the slate clean. And we become righteous because of him. We are made righteous. Nothing impure will ever enter heaven. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful. But only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. God's grand story started with humanity in paradise. The Garden of Eden. The perfect honeymoon that was supposed to last forever. No sin, no sickness or death. But free will. Did you hear me? But free will chose to disobey God. And sin was set into motion for all of humanity. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All fall short of the glory of God. All of us are born into depravity, separated from a holy God. Every one of us need a Savior. And Jesus is our Savior, our Redeemer. One day, everyone in Christ will experience the new heaven and the new earth. But right now, we are living in the day of redemption. And God's desire, listen, lean in, God's desire is for everyone to know him. God wants you to know him. That's why we, the church, have been given a mission to go. It's called the Great Commission, to move our feet, to take the gospel of God's amazing grace from our neighborhoods to the nations. Every person on this side of heaven owes the gospel to every person on this side of hell. How dare we keep hidden the very thing that saved us. Psalms 89 says no one can escape the power of death in the grave. Did you know it's it's statistically proven that 10 out of every 10 people die? Earth is a preview for eternity. Life on this side is terminal. Worldwide, a person dies every 1.8 seconds. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four people just died. Four people just stepped into eternity. And I'm not trying to be Daryl Downer, but life can be over like that. Death doesn't discriminate. It happens to the young and the old, the rich and the poor. The educated and the uneducated. Red, yellow, black, and white. Death comes to every single person. No one is promised tomorrow. The Bible says life is but a vapor. It's here and then it's gone. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, each person is destined to die once and after that comes what? The judgment. Again, you don't just die. Judgment is coming. According to this book, there's two judgments. If you are a Christian, if you are a Christ follower, you will be judged by your words and the work you did to build God's kingdom. The Bible says the motives of our heart will be exposed. Heaven doesn't just change the way we die. It changes how we live our lives. 
what we do with our time, talent, and treasures on this side of heaven, it matters, church. Why do you think God said we bring the tithe? Because he knew the gravitational pull of loving money. Money is not evil. The Bible says it's the love of money. Well, how do I know if I love money or not? Follow the money. The trail always leads to the desires of your heart. God wants to be first. It's not because he's broke. It's because he knows the gravitational pull of the desires of this world. One day all of us will give an account for what we did with the abundant life God blessed us with. Whose kingdom are you building? God's kingdom or your kingdom? This kingdom will crumble one day. The second judgment is the book of life. Some call it the great white throne judgment. And according to Revelation chapter 20, this judgment determines whether or not a person will inherit eternal life in heaven or receive everlasting punishment in a real place called hell. It's in the book. Revelation 20, 15. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Please listen to me. This is not judgment or condemnation. There's a big difference between knowing about someone and knowing someone. As I was preparing this week, I I read an old spiritual Dominique this week that said there's a lot of folks talking about heaven ain't going there. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians to examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Is it real? Is it authentic? Do you know about God or do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? Be honest. When you look at your life, what do you see? Do you see The culture, or do you see Christ? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a, what? New creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 1 John 5, verses 12 and 13. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever doesn't have God's Son, Jesus, does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that what? You may know. Say that with me. That you may know. Not hope, not wish, but that you may know that you have eternal life. Acts 4.12 says there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Jesus is the only way to God, period. Because he put his foot on death to give eternal life to anyone who is humble enough to ask for it. To receive this beautiful, special gift called salvation. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. How great is the love. Oh, this is so good. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called the children of God. The word lavish literally means spilling over. I cannot exaggerate God's love for you. Romans 5 8 says, While we were still sinning, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God loves you. So I'll ask you one more time. Do you know where you will spend eternity one second after you take your last breath on planet earth? In John 3, Jesus said, unless you are born again, talking about a spiritual rebirth, you cannot, you will not see the kingdom of God. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed, and please do not leave the room unless it's an emergency. The gospel has been presented. Jesus is the only way to God. 
The Bible says if you confess your if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, your mind, your soul, your emotions, that God raised him from the dead, Jesus is alive, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth, speaking it, that you are saved. Did you know God is still accepting reservations for heaven? It's still not too late. Eight people in the first experience punched their ticket. Jesus is the only way to God. He is our greatest prize. So if you are in this room or watching online and you are ready to surrender your life to Jesus, I'm going to invite you to pray and just tell God, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I I repent of my sins and I place my entire trust in Jesus. From this day forward, from September 17th, 2023, I will follow you, Jesus, with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my strength, all of my mind. Now, if you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, the Bible says you are a new creation. Your sins have been forgiven. The Holy Spirit now resides in you. And one day the joy of heaven will be your home. But, and this is a really big but, our faith on earth is not a private thing. It's about going public. This is the litmus test of our faith. So I'm about to count to three, and when I hit three, if you prayed that prayer, if you invited Jesus into your heart, I want you to raise your hand, declaring that you just said yes to Jesus. You ready? One, two, three. Raise your hand. Hold them up high. I just gave my life to Jesus. Hold them up high. Now look at me. Everyone look at me with your hand up. Keep them up. Look at me if you got your hand up. Did you mean it? Did you mean it? Look at me. Did you mean it? 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 Over here? Did you mean it? Did you mean it? Did you mean it? The Bible says that when we give our life to Jesus, it's about going public with our faith. Jesus says, anyone who denies me before the Father, I will deny them before men. That's a scary verse. So I want every person to stand to your feet. And this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we decide, was this prayer that I just prayed real and authentic? Or was it just my emotions? I'm going to count to three again. And if you prayed that prayer and you meant it and you raised your hand and you looked at me acknowledging yes I just prayed that prayer preacher when I hit three this second time I want you to come and stand at the front this is scary I remember this day when I was 18 years old I remember saying the prayer and thinking I can't go forward everybody's watching everybody's looking they know who I am they know what I've done praying that God gives you the courage because if you can't take the first step you'll never take the second third or fourth you'll never experience everything God has for you so I'm counting to three and if you prayed that prayer in you meant it I want you to leave your seat and come stand down here at the front you ready one two three let's go come on come on come on come on From the back to the front, come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Celebrate, church. This is why we do what we do. This is why we exist. To see people move from life, from death to life. Man, what a beautiful picture. This is incredible. Incredible. Now, I want every one of you down here at the front to look at me. You just made the greatest decision of your entire life. Yeah. Greatest decision. 
And the enemy knows he's lost your soul, but now he wants to steal your testimony. He wants to steal the abundant life God has for you. So chances are, lean in, life is about to get harder. You're going to think, ah, I gave my life to Jesus. Everything is about to be puppy dogs and ice cream. No, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. And so here's what we're going to do. Because we are committed to your journey with Jesus Christ. It's all about the next step, which is baptism. And then it's about becoming a disciple of Jesus. And so we want to help you. We want, we want to be your church home. Help you become everything God wants you to become. So we have Pastor Shannon's over here. I think I saw Michael over here. I want you to go to my left, out that exit door, and you're going to go down the hallway to the right. All we're doing is getting your information so we can reach out to you and talk about your next step, which is baptism. We're not going to sell your email. We're not going to call you every day. But it's important that you don't try to escape in this moment. <laughs> go back to your seat. Slide in the bathroom. All right? Finish what you started. Finish what you started. It's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. I was 18 years old when I stood where you're standing. God's changed my life. So you follow them as they go to my left. Church, let's celebrate one more time. God bless every one of you.